Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Gerard and today I'm going to show you how to create your own AWS account and set up a secure login using IAM. Whether you're planning to host a website, learn cloud skills for your career, or just explore what AWS can do, this is the first step you'll need to take. So let's jump right in. Okay, everyone. So let's get to it before we jump into the clicks on the setup. Let's quickly talk about why AWS uses this particular approach. So we talk about root user. We talk about IAM. Why is this? By the way, aws.amazon.com is where we're going. And you see over here it says root user. And we want to go ahead and just click new account, new sign up. So we're going to go ahead and go through that process. I do want to also mention as we're doing this that the AWS does recommend you avoid using the root user for everyday tasks. Over the past few years, AWS has increased the focus on security best practices. So one of those changes is strongly encouraging everybody to use the IAM. So let's go ahead and get through this security verification. The IAM basically is going to let you separate users with specific permission. Okay, so we are almost there. Just have to go ahead and use the email now, confirmation. Get that moving here. We're going to sign in. Select a support plan, free. Okay, so I just logged in here. And we are clicking the MFA device. All right. Passkey seems to be the quickest here, so I just use the passkey of my computer. And here we are. We are logged in as the root user. We do have uh, security credentials here, so on and so forth. This is basically the MFA area where you can just assign and really do a lot of things if you really want to boost up and harden security. So I want to go to users here. I want to create a user. Okay, the admin test one is going to have access. Okay, the admin test one is going to have access. I'm going to eliminate that. We're just doing this for testing purposes. I want to be changing passwords again. All right, so we want to set the permissions for this particular user. All right, I'm going to put them in the group for administrators. And then we are going to create the user. So now we have admin test one. Here's the console sign in right here. Okay, here you go. Retrieve the password and then return to the users list. All right, so we're returning to the user list over here. It 
So basically we have the username admin test one. Okay. And the permissions are, we'll just enable. This is right now enabled without MFA. We can change that. Again, we're just setting up and testing admin test one. Let's go to user groups. We have administrators. Let's go to the user groups, administrators, user group name. We'll add users, and we have a user here, admin test one. We're going to add that user here. So now, as part of the user group name administrators, which has admin rights, we now have admin test one, which is the user. And that user now has pertinent permissions to log in to that group. So admin test one. Okay. So log out as the root admin. We log in. We're going to look for users. The account ID. Okay. So now we are going to sign in. We're going to have to know this account ID and then the username is going to be the admin test. So this is the account that we just created. Okay. There you have it. We have the permissions here to do the things that we need to do within our organization. So just to summarize everything, we create the group first, then we attach the permissions to that group, like administrator access or custom policy. Then we add users to that group. This is easier if you'll have multiple users who need the same permissions because you only manage permissions once on the group. The option two is to create a user directly and attach permissions to that user individually. And this is what we did. And this is fine if you only have one or two users. So AWS's own documentation often shows the group first method because it's cleaner for companies or teams. And that is what we did in this video. But for personal projects or very small setups, just you or one of the persons, it's perfectly acceptable to create a user right away and then attach the administrator access directly to that user. But the bottom line is this, you don't have to create a group first. It just depends on how many people you expect to manage. So if you're doing this just for yourself to learn and host WordPress, which is going to be the next project, you can safely skip creating a group and assign permissions directly to your IAM user. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe if you felt that you received value in this video. Thank you.